Well, our subject tonight is faithfulness. Faithfulness. And uh, you're very welcome if you're, if you're watching online. Uh, we pray that something said tonight will be a blessing to you also. Faithfulness. Last weekend was our golden wedding anniversary. So faithfulness was very much in my mind. We had a long weekend away. We went to Bath. And we stayed in Bath for a long weekend and went round the Roman baths. Hadn't been for a long, long time. And lots had changed since we were there last. We went round the... They, they got a construction, a reconstruction, should I say, of what would have been the temple. And I hadn't actually appreciated that there was a temple there in the past. The temple was constructed between 60 and 70 AD. It was standing, I found, standing so close to the altar they had a quite a large section of the altar that they'd found, and so they'd made the rest up of it in wood. I found standing so near to the altar had a real impact on me. That altar had been used for a period of about 300 years, and so you can imagine that thousands of animals had been sacrificed to their pagan gods. And it reminded me of some verses. Tonight I'm not having a b one Bible reading. I'm having about 20, I think. So you'll just have to bear with me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the readings together. Hebrews uh, chapter 10 was, was something that came to my mind. Hebrews 9 and then, verse, and then chapter 10. Chapter 9, verse 27 and 28. It says this. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And chapter 10, verse 4, because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. My mind also went to 1 Peter and chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. How amazing. All through the years, those people had been sacrificing animals and had missed out that Christ was the sacrifice. But John the Baptist had missed out. You will remember that in John 1, 29, it says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist immediately knew that here was the one who was going to become the sacrifice for the sin of mankind. Many won't accept, sadly, that Jesus is the Messiah. Even the Jews have been misled. We went on from there the next day to Wells and we spent a nice time in Wells Cathedral. We had a guided tour in fact. And I was struck by this because there was a highly decorated tomb and the tour guide explained why it was highly decorated. But something also that he said, I'd not heard before. He said they paid a lot of money because they felt that having it highly decorated would, would take them further into the kingdom of God. But they also left a lot of money 
And they paid people to pray for them. That they might come through purgatory and be released from their sins. Well, we know that there's another way. We know that their souls will only be saved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The third day, we went to Cheddar Gorge. It's great you didn't come here to hear my holiday, did you? But this is relevant. The third day, we, came, we went to Cheddar Gorge. And as you will know, there's an inscription on the rock face. Inscription of Augustos Montagu Top Lady. I like saying that. He was the writer of Rock of Ages, as you know. The inscription is headed, Rock of Ages. So it says, this rock derives its name from the well-known hymn written about 1762 by the Reverend A.M. Top Lady, who was inspired while sheltering in this cliff during a storm. Do you know, we're not sure whether that actually is true or not. That can't be proven or disproven. But what we do know is we have his hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. And I want to read the third verse because it struck me the comparison with the sacrifices on the altar to other gods, the being paid to pray for someone who had already deceased. But now we read about a person who had a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked came to thee for dress, helpless, look to thee for grace. Foul, I to the fountain fly, wash me, Saviour, or I die. So although I did have a lovely week, long weekend, I felt the Holy Spirit just spoke to me about those things. I, 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 was, I woke up one night and all these things came to me, the comparisons. But what I'd really prepared to speak about tonight was faithfulness. <laughs> faithfulness. Faithfulness is such an important quality for us to develop as believers, isn't it? All relationships are built on trust. So when you grow in faithfulness, people will learn that they can depend on you and in return, you will enjoy stronger, healthier relationships with people in your life. Another reason why faithfulness is so important is because God rewards faithfulness. God is looking for people who will be faithful to him and his kingdom and so that we may bring great glory and honour to him. There are so many areas where we need to be faithful in life, aren't there? We need to be faithful at home, faithful at work, faithful in marriage, faithful to our commitments, faithful to our word, faithful with our money, faithful to the family and friends, faithful to the church, and of course, most importantly, faithful to our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfulness is so important, isn't it? It shows up our character, and we need the Holy Spirit to help us. I will grow in faithfulness as I allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen my character so that I will become a stronger, more trustworthy and dependable person in all areas of my life. We have a faithful God, don't we? The Bible tells us that God is faithful in all his ways. Psalm 25 verse 10 says, All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful 
for those who keep the demands of his covenant. And Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Our God is a faithful God who is absolutely trustworthy and dependable. He is faithful to his creation. He is faithful to his people. He was faithful in sending Jesus. He is faithful to judge sin. He is faithful to save sinners who put their faith and trust in him. So how wonderful it is to know that God is faithful and that we can always depend on him. Not only is God faithful in all his ways, but in his word too. God's word is trustworthy and true. We read in Numbers 23, 19, God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and then not fulfill? God is faithful in all his ways and therefore God is faithful in all his words. The two go together, don't they? We sometimes use a saying, you're only as good as your word. When a person is faithful, you can trust their word as well. God has given us his word, the Bible, and his word, as revealed in the scriptures, is absolutely trustworthy and true. Psalm 19 verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. There's a saying, you may have heard it. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Well, it's a good saying, but actually the middle bit is irrelevant. Because it really doesn't matter whether we believe it or not. If God said it, then that settles it. God's word is trustworthy and true. When thinking about God and faithfulness, we of course must look at Jesus and his life. And when we do, we'll see that Jesus, the Son of God, obviously displayed the fruit of faithfulness in his life. At the end of his life on earth, Jesus was able to say to the Father in John 17, verses 4 and 5, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Hebrews 3, 5 and 6 tells us that Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. Verse 6, but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. And we are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. Revelation 1 verse 5 speaks of Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. So Jesus displayed faithfulness in his life. He was faithful to finish the work that the Father gave him to do. He was faithful as a son over all God's house. He is the faithful witness who was faithful to the truth, even unto death. When we look at faithfulness and God, it's easy to see that faithfulness is at the very root of God's character 
and is therefore fully displayed in the life of Jesus Christ, his son. So what does the Bible teach us about faithfulness and character? Proverbs 11, verse 3 says, The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Here those who are unfaithful are contrasted with those of integrity. Integrity has to do with wholeness as a person. The faithful person is the same inside and out. They are the same in private as they are in public. Their heart and their actions match up. Daniel in the Old Testament is a very good example of faithfulness and integrity. We read in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 4 that the administrators and the satraps they tried to find ground for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs. But they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. When the Babylonian administrators were looking for some way to accuse Daniel, they could find nothing. I wonder how you and I would get on if a group of journalists were assigned to dig up dirt in our lives. We see a lot of that on the news these days. Horrific, isn't it? And I sometimes think, well, I'm glad I'm, I'm not a famous person. But it's important because we are being watched as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our actions count louder often than our words. You see, Daniel had no secrets. He was a man of integrity because he was faithful and trustworthy in all that he did. Of course, Jesus was the greatest example of all. Even Pilate had to say, I find no basis for a charge against this man. So to be a faithful person, we must, must get our priorities right. Jesus said in Matthew 6:33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Verse 17, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. You see, the faithful person seeks God's kingdom first and endeavours to live their life wisely, making the most of every opportunity. Faithfulness is also about seeing the job through. In Colossians 4, 17, Paul told one of his fellow workers, see to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord. And in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, the Apostle Paul was able to say of himself, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So we see that the faithful person works hard and finishes the work God has given them to do, even as Jesus completed the work that the Father gave him to do. Will we, at the end of our lives, be able to say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, I trust so. I'm sure that it's obvious that we need to be more faithful and we need more faithful people in this world 
And we need more faithful Christians in the church too. So how can we grow in faithfulness? Well, I came across seven points and I'm going to share with them with you just as they were written. They all remind us of the faithfulness of Almighty God. Number one, God is faithful to keep his promises. We read in Joshua 21, verse 45, not one of the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Number two, God is faithful in his love and compassion for you. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Number three, God is faithful in times of trial or temptation. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Number four, God is faithful to prepare you for heaven. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, the one who calls us is faithful and he will do it. Number five, God is faithful to protect us from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. Number six, God is faithful even when we are not. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we are faithless, he, God, will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. And finally, number seven, God is faithful to forgive our sins. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify or cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we will grow in faithfulness as we remind ourselves again and again of the wonderful faithfulness of God to us. Another way to grow in faithfulness is to be faithful in small things. In the parable of the talents, you might remember, in Matthew chapter 25, the servant who was given five talents, he put his money to work and gained five more. When the master returned, he told the servant, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That's Matthew 25, verse 21. Also, Jesus said in Luke 16, verse 10, Whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if we want to grow in faithfulness, we must be faithful in the small things and God will trust us with more. 
But faithfulness is not always easy, is it? Because sometimes it might really hurt. Psalm 15 says that God honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts. I'm going to read the whole of Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk, walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbour no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. So in conclusion, we should keep reminding ourselves of God's faithfulness to us. We should ask the Holy Spirit to inspire us, to cultivate the fruit of faithfulness in us so that others might see the difference in us. Faithfulness is in short supply these days, isn't it? But that was also the case in the time of Solomon. He says in Proverbs 20 verse 6, Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man, who can find? May God help us to be men and women who are faithful and who show through our daily lives and actions that we can be trusted as we seek to be followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.